Hi, I'm Quinn Nabrowski. I had a technology specialist at Stanford Libraries and the Division of Literatures, Cultures, and Languages at Stanford University. I'm one of the three co-founders of Sucho, Saving Ukrainian Cultural Heritage Online. The first weekend after Russia invaded Ukraine, Anna Kies posted a tweet about a data rescue effort that she was imagining focused on museum uh, cultural heritage uh, specifically related to the music collections that have been digitized. On the other side of the world in Vienna, Austria, Sebastian Mastorovich saw this tweet and had some ideas about tools that she could use, specifically the free open source web recorder software. And in California, I saw it too. And I also wondered if we could do more faster. And the three of us got together that Monday, along with a few other colleagues, and on Tuesday, we launched Sucho, doing everything all at the same time, writing tutorials, setting up a Slack instance, making a website. And in the first day, we had 400 people volunteer to archive Ukrainian cultural heritage websites. Now, this is the first time, as far as we can tell, that there's been an effort at this scale to archive cultural heritage materials um, you know, digitally during a war but it's not without precedent in terms of digital humanities rapid response. And for more on that, I will turn it over to Alex. There are, of course, whenever we try to, you know, uh, understand a phenomenon, there's many genealogies always to be drawn. Uh, that's more often the case uh, than not. This one in particular is one, uh, is the genealogy of uh, us coming together as librarians and technologists in the, in the world of the, at least the academy. Uh, and it's something, and, and, and at least in the North Atlantic world, the specific um, in the United States and Canada, even more so specifically. Um, and, uh, about, uh, when, about 2016, the way that I tell myself this story, but of course, again, like with all genealogies, there's always, you can always go further back, further wider, et cetera. It's just this one particular way of telling a story is that uh, uh, around 2000, uh, after Trump won, one of the things that Trump wanted to do, Donald Trump, uh, uh, one, one of the things he wanted to do was to, uh, uh, as part of his party line, uh, was to undermine uh, the EPA, and the Environmental Protection Agency. And all of a sudden, uh, servers where EPA data had been housed were under threat and a group of librarians uh, got together to do a data rescue of the servers creating copies uh, that went to other universities in the United States and some servers even outside the universities. Um, you can you can find this uh, project and effort under a hashtag data rescue. Uh, and of course now they have they, they, uh, they have continued doing exact that type of work, right? Um, of uh, trying to, to, to safeguard specific data sets. It's slightly different than Sucho, which is going after web archives. But this is very inspiring to many of us. And uh, when the Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico, uh, we, in, our, in, in my place of work at Columbia University, we wanted to, to, we wanted to help out and we wanted to do something similar uh, to that. We, we, uh, we, we wanted to follow in that example. What we did was we organized a mapathon uh, to help the Red Cross reconstruct the map of the island, which they will need in order to be able to deliver much needed aid to, to uh, parts of the island that were, that were very damaged. And uh, we knew how to do everything, right? We, we knew how to set up a workshop or order pizza, and we knew how to teach the workshop, and we were using in particular OSM's Task Manager tool, which is the tool that, that a lot of people use in this side of the Atlantic uh, for this type of task. And, um, but we didn't stop there. One of the things that we tried to do then is uh, like uh, other folks in our community, in our library and technologies uh, uh, and scholarly communities, uh, they, they wanted to do something similar where we thought it would start talking behind the scenes, helping out people put together a little like, uh, here are the step-by-step -step of how you set it up. So just to help people do it faster. So even though we all have the skills, it always helps, you know, when somebody else does the prep for you, this is like a, a, like a course materials uh, type stuff, uh, models for the posters and this kind of stuff. But so this kind of normal behavior online amongst all of us in our community actually can be leveraged here. 
since March, we've had over 1,300 volunteers, mostly from North America and Western Europe, volunteer to archive Ukrainian cultural heritage websites. Now, we're defining cultural heritage really broadly. So libraries, archives, galleries, museums, but also other places where people experience cultural heritage in their day-to-day -day life. So things like children's museums and libraries, children's after-school programs, and um, even fan fiction archives are, are all in scope for what we're looking for. We've had an open form where anyone can submit a link, but we've also been looking for links in other ways. We've used Wikidata as a way to try to find museums, and we've even had volunteers digitally walking through the streets of cities under attack, looking for the cultural heritage icon or the museum icon on Google Maps. We've used a variety of different tools and methods for archiving sites. We send all of the URLs that we get to the Wayback Machine, and we have people checking to make sure that the sites are thoroughly crawled, not just the front pages, um, but things two or three or more layers deep. We've also been using the open source web recorder tools as a cornerstone of what we've been doing, where people are using their own laptops and a, a friendly, easy to use, um, you know, a system called Browser Tricks Cloud that is, is literally as easy as filling out a web form and you can get a, a high fidelity archive of a site. There's also a browser plugin that you can use, um, part of the web recorder suite, where you can manually click through sites that are highly interactive or um, have maps or other components that need human interaction in order to be fully captured. And using things like Browser Tricks Cloud has also allowed us to bring in more kinds of volunteers. Um, while many of our volunteers come from the library and museum world, we also have senior citizens who have retired and have time on their hands and want to help, and even children who want to do something to help Ukraine in this war. My eight-year-old son, Sam, really enjoys going through our giant spreadsheet and finding sites in areas that are um, you know, particularly critical right now to be able to capture with Browser Trace Cloud. Next, I'll turn it over to Anna for a little bit about her experience volunteering with Sucho. Hello, my name is Anna Rokitianskaya. I am a librarian for Russian and Belarusian collections at Harvard Library. The war on Ukraine has affected me not only personally, but also professionally. Um, and I'm sure it's true for anyone whose work uh, involves dealing with Slavic studies. And uh, from the very beginning, uh, I had this urge to, to do something uh, to help, but what can a Slavic librarian do, especially the one based in the West? So when the call for volunteers came out for this new project, Saving Ukrainian Cultural Heritage Online, I decided to go ahead and apply and I signed up and my Sucho Slack invitation came on March 1st, which means it was, we're just one week into the war. Uh, that was uh, the most difficult time on the emotional level. And so what followed were, three months of hard work, which were both exciting and heart wrenching. And I learned a lot and I met people from various countries and all walks of life who are absolutely committed to helping Ukraine in any way possible and to provide intellectual and informational resistance to the efforts by the Russian government to erase Ukrainian identity and its culture. As a librarian whose background is mostly in traditional areas of librarianship, like collection development and cataloging, but also curating born digital collections and web archives, I was thankfully able to find areas in Sucho in which I could apply my skills and expertise. Currently, one major area of Sucho work in which I'm involved is metadata. Plus, there are two curatorial sub-projects, uh, which I will also mention here. So the metadata work, one of the directions of Sucho work, in addition to just web archiving entire sites, is gathering data and files from major archived collections and adding them to an internet archive collection for easier discovery. Those files include images, data, text, and video files. When these files get archived, they get archived with partial or incomplete or inconsistent metadata descriptions. And so our group in Sucho, uh, which is led by Kim Martin and Anna Kies, is working on creating and editing this metadata. 
we had to develop the metadata structure and then make decisions regarding description principles, for example, whether to use control vocabulary or free text. We decided to use control vocabulary based on the Library of Congress subject headings, combining more detailed subjects into sort of wider categories. One of my duties in Sucha metadata work is to standardize the application of subject headings. And to that end, I maintain a list of headings to be used. And of course, the metadata work for a project of this scale, it's quite huge, uh, is quite different from regular cataloging. It is being done by a group of volunteers who may not necessarily have had any type of professional cataloging training or library training for that matter. However, since the material of being archived is so large, you have to work with people who are willing to dedicate their time and effort to it. And of course, some training needed to be done and training materials also needed to be developed. And so this project is currently still underway. Um, another project that I'm involved in on Sucho at the moment is Sucho Gallery. That project is led by Anna Kies. We create a Mika gallery that will feature images, media, text, uh, et cetera, from Ukrainian cultural heritage institutions whose websites we are archiving. And the gallery will be publicized widely in order to promote Ukrainian cultural heritage through featuring some objects from institutional websites that we archive, but also in order to fundraise for the institutions for materials they may need during the war. Uh, we also have heard from some Ukrainian educational institutions and community groups, both inside and outside Ukraine, that these materials could be used for teaching and learning about Ukraine and that uh, they may otherwise be unavailable. I am actively participating in development of the gallery concept, metadata structure, and the content selection. And the one more curatorial project that I'm involved in on Sucho has to do with building a collection of memes related to the Russo-Ukrainian war. The war brought about a real proliferation of these memes. And they are an important born digital ephemera and a primary source for research into the society's response to the war. They touch on a wide array of issues from the general war progress to ridiculing of the enemy troops, describing the details of the diplomatic war work and relations between the world leaders, the economic effects of the war, the propaganda and government sponsored media in Russia, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Basically, any striking news piece becomes a meme the very same day, and any politician can become a character in a meme. Nothing and no one is safe. The meme collecting is done by manual submission of individual memes via a Google form, and also by automatic scraping of some Twitter and Telegram accounts that are specifically dedicated to Ukrainian war memes. Believe it or not, there are quite a few of those. Along with Quinn Dombrowski and Simon Wiles, we are working on the way to present this collection in an interactive way online that will make it accessible for both researchers and the general public. To sum up my Sucho Library of Volunteer experience today, uh, I'd like to say that for me, Sucho has been sort of an ideal workplace um, where creativity reigns, decisions are made quickly, technical issues are resolved very quickly and effectively, and true collaboration is at the rule of the game. So it's kind of like utopia of sorts. However, behind all this, there is um, the poignant realization, you know, I wish there was no reason for this project to exist. I wish we didn't need to do any of this. But, uh, and, you know, at this point, it feels good to be able to try to make a difference. So the work on Sucho continues. Our ultimate long-term goal here is digital repatriation. These aren't 
our archives to decide you know what happens to them and we absolutely do not want to be creating a safe archive of ukrainian cultural heritage for people to study in the west while the country is destroyed our goal is to turn these archives over to the ukrainian cultural heritage community at the end of the war see what they need and help them use these archives as a way to rebuild Sucho is a strange project. Our best case scenario is for all of these archives to never be needed. Nothing would make us happier than to see that all the websites are still online at the end of the war and everyone who built them and takes care of them is alive and well and ready to resume their work. Already we have evidence that suggests that that's not going to happen. There are sites that have gone down and haven't come back up and the war is continuing. One of the things that is uh, most disturbing right now for us working on Sucho is seeing the Ukraine fatigue in the news cycle and especially with some of the tech companies that supported the project in their early days. And this really is a, a moment of transition where the project is, is shifting from being an effort of individual people supported um, you know, technically and financially by tech companies um, you know, to a longer term partnership with libraries that have been ramping up their efforts and infrastructure and processes and, and thinking for the long term in order to support Ukraine in this war. And so in the coming months, um, you know, we will be continuing our partnerships with libraries to mirror our archives um, with organizations like the German National Research Infrastructure uh, to provide some of our cloud services. And, you know, even if it's not in the news every night, you know, the, the war in Ukraine continues and Suto's work continues. Um, we have many more sites to archive. We're continuing to track memes. We're working on the galleries. And um, we'd love for you to join us um, on our website, sucho.org, S-U-C-H-O.org. There is a form that you can sign up to volunteer. And we have a, a waiting list right now, but we're hoping to open it up to people um, you know, in waves over the summer um, because there's still a lot to do. So thank you so much for your time. <laughs>